Hey, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Today, let's see, we're going to be talking about this knife right here. Let's zoom in on that a little. Oops. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, there, that's good. Yeah, <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about that knife there. It is a cult knife, and it is beautiful look at that knife yeah we're going to be talking about this knife and maybe a few other things because whenever i get a knife like this right there questions are just popping up in my head and i can't help it and um so um we're going to be asking those questions today some of them are going to be tough so to watch this full video, um, you gotta have some grit, okay? You gotta be tough enough to watch video and um, not get your feelings hurt. And so if you're that kind of guy and you wanna talk about this really cool knife and this diamond um, etched uh, bone, uh, go ahead and check out the video. All right, Knife Wars in the Woods. Sherry's got her, her, uh, Kubi phylum, and she's getting way too close. Stop. Hey, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my viewers. Bonjour, Prevavet, Guten Tag, Ola, Ciao, Konnichiwa, and good day to my foreign viewers. And, um, today we're going to be talking about this, uh, knife right here. And the primary question about this knife is, why wouldn't you call that a premium knife? That's a pretty fair question, especially after we look at this knife a little more closely. And so um, I'm going to clear up the table a little bit here so we can just concentrate on this knife and uh, we'll, we'll look at why this knife is so good. All right, so we're going to explore this wonderful knife and uh, get it, explore. Kind of goes along with this knife right here. Look at this knife. Man, that is a good looking knife. Um, three and three quarter inch Whittler. When I turn this over, it is a split back Whittler. Look at that. Split back wiggle. Whittler, big, big Whittler. This is the kind of Whittler um, that you can actually use to do some whittling on. Um, so you have diamond jig, uh, genuine bone here. Really nice coloration on this bone. Kind of a chestnut. You can see right there. Really deep, uh, penetrating colors on this knife that uh, they've really colored it well and you have um, nickel silver uh, pins nickel silver shield check out that shield rampant colt shield 175 that stands for the 175th anniversary of colt you have a deep stamped colt um, C on the knife, pinch bolster. On the other side, it's pinch, and you have a nice, well defined thread in there. Beautiful uh, mirror polish. So, I haven't polished this knife, so I haven't um, put it on a wheel or anything like that. I did uh, wipe it down uh, when I got this knife. Oh my gosh, that is an outstanding pull on that. And here you have a really cool etch, 175th anniversary Colt. There's a rampant Colt on there in uh, gold there in 1836 to 2011. So this knife dates to uh, 2011. On the other side, CT32062, quality since 1836, China. So it's China made and um, really nice 
give you a picture of that in my hand. It's really nice, uh, aggressive clip point on that. And in the back, you have two pin blades, which uh, I would fault this knife for that. It really should be a coping blade. But you got two pin blades, that's okay. Let me wipe this down a little bit. Get my oily fingerprints off this knife. There we go. There. Get that mirror polish on it. Look at the lock up right there. Really nice. There is, you can feel nothing whatsoever. Perfect uh, transitions. Let me pop this open and we'll look down inside of it real quick. So that's a look at that end. You see right there. Nicely mirror polished tang. It's mirror polished down inside. Look at that. Pretty nice, isn't it? I mean, that's a nice knife. Look at that mirror polish on the tang on the main blade. That's your transitions. I mean, that is, look at the transition on that. There is nothing there. All right. Uh, so that is pretty nice knife. All right. <clears throat> so this knife was obviously produced in 2011 by United Cutlery, who had a license from... Um, Colt Manufacturing, Colt, uh, the firearm Colt Manufacturing, to produce knives. And they had that license from uh, 1993 all the way up to 2011. In 2015, um, Colt went bankrupt. And as part of the um, bankruptcy um, agreement, they had to quit making uh, knives. At that time, Colt said they didn't intend on ever uh, making knives again. Maybe that'll change. But if it doesn't change, this knife right here is uh, one of the last knives that are going to bear the Colt symbol on it um, until Colt goes bankrupt because uh, they have a trademark. You can't really do it. If you do do it, you're going to get in trouble. And so that's what's special about is um, it is the um, license Colt, and and not 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 the last one, but you're not going to see it again. And it's 175th uh, anniversary uh, Colt. Um, so these were inexpensive knives, without a doubt. It's made in China. I don't know what this went for. I'd say probably around eighteen dollars is what it sold for in 2011. Um, somebody who bought one of these, go ahead and chime in, let us know. But you can get these Colt knives on eBay fairly regularly in the $40 range. So here's another question. The first question is why wouldn't you consider that a premium knife? I already showed the knife to you. It's without flaw. So there are no, um, <coughs> gaps in this knife. And it's a pretty nicely built knife. The second question is, why would you pay double? So I paid $36 to get this knife right here. Uh, when you can get it a uh, Rough Rider for $12, $14, $18, you know, why would you do that? Well, <clears throat> I already answered that question. This knife, um, uh, you're not going to be able to get a hold of these knives in the future. And... Um, you know, so it is makes it a little more collectible. And personally, I bought this because of this diamond uh, check ring. I just love it. It's really well done on this uh, on this uh, bone right here. Usually, you see this diamond check ring on wood, and so uh, having it on bone is really cool. I just like it. Um, another thing you got to ask yourself is 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 there anything unusual besides that about this knife? So I'd say, yeah, um, the pattern is kind of unusual. Now, <clears throat> Rough Rider does offer this exactly 
exact same pattern. Slant bolsters. It's a Rough Rider. Of course, it doesn't have the Colt or the Colt Shield on it. It doesn't have the uh, diamond uh, jigged bone. But um, it's this pattern. So it's not like uh, you're paying double just to get this pattern. But it's not the most uh, common pattern either. You know, so uh, Rough Rider is offering, I think, six different Whittler patterns. All right, guys. So this is where we have to ask the tough questions. This is where we have to look in the mirror. How we have to pull our boots on by the bootstraps. Pull them up. Tighten up. And, and be tough. And that is, why wouldn't you consider that a premium knife? It's really tough. It is beautiful. Beautifully executed in every way on this knife. You could probably find things to nitpick. The top square up here, if you look right over here towards the edge of it, it's not the smoothest right there. A lot of Rough Riders do a great job at at having those top squares really smooth. But honestly, this is a really well-made knife. You can see it. You just look at it. So, why wouldn't you consider that a premium knife? Here's another one. This is a beautiful knife. Beautiful bone. GEC. But the back spring is not mirror polished. Like that other knife. That knife is a multi-blade knife. And you have opposing blades. So you have blade on one side. Blades on the other side. It's harder to make than this knife. This knife right here is two blades. But they're on the same side. A lot easier to make. There's no gapping in this knife. But if you look at the top square. Look at that. Compared to this. $226 I paid for this. Now brand new. I think this went for $120. Maybe $130. When it was brand new. So secondary market boosted the prices on it. But look at the difference. Look at the transitions here. Good. If you look really close. You can see how the bolsters are dinged up. Where the, um, where the etching is. On this. Where the jigging is. You see that? It's dinged up right there. I don't know why that is. But <clears throat> this is not a second. So. Um, uh, do I think. This knife equals this knife. No. No. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's equivalent. I'm saying it's pretty damn good. You know. For the money. And it's impressive. Here's another one. Made by Canal Cutlery. Beautiful knife. This knife does have gapping. They're not really apparent when you look at it. But you put that up to the light. And all kinds of light shows, shows through there. Not a whole lot. Just a little bit. If you look right here. Kind of. Uh, you can see it's kind of girded up on the top square. You can see it's not evenly cut. On the... Um, on the uh, knives right there. If you look at this. Look how square that is across there. Where they cut the tang ends on the uh, blades. And look at this. So little tiny things. This you definitely would consider a premium knife. Anybody picking this knife up would. Ooh. Wow. Ah. Uh, you know. It is a fantastic knife. And uh, the price reflected that. On this knife. And so um, this knife I think was. Around $100 is what I got it for. Here's another one. A.G. Russell. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Very unique. Never seen another knife like this. Cracked mother of pearl on this knife right here. Fantastic. Single, look at that. Single uh, back spring going down there. Big, wide, single back spring. There's ever so much of a little gap in this. If you hold it up to the light, you can see a little tiny bit of light. Over here, you see a little bit of gurring on the uh, top square. 
This knife hails, I think, from 1991. It was made, made in Germany. Nickel silver premium materials. Beautiful knife. I paid $100 for it. Uh, if you go on eBay now, you're going to pay a couple hundred for this knife right here. Um, trying to get one. And then they don't come up very often. So, again, am I saying that knife is better than that knife? No, I'm not. I don't think it is. Uh, for one thing, you know, the bone in here is really nice, but obviously it's not as good as this bone. I would say that this is pretty simplistic jigging. That's one of the, the um, criticisms I would have of GEC. They're, they're not very bold on their jigging patterns or what they're doing. They keep it simple. And this is much more complicated to do that um, in a, in a uh, knife format. Here's another one. Now, this thing's perfect. Okay. <laughs> Rose water. Rose craft walks on water. That's just the way it is. This You look at the top square up here. It's perfect. Perfect all the way through, no gouges, perfect uh, transitions all the way around, no gapping. It is absolutely fantastic knife, especially for the money. And um, but we would we would consider these things kind of premium knives, wouldn't we? Here's another one, you know, a beautiful case um, gunstock. Pattern, uh, man, I forget the pattern on this. 131, is that it, guys? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is pattern number? 30. It's a 130 is the pattern on this. A beautiful, curly, natural curly maple. Perfect transitions on this knife. There are no gaps on this knife. There are no bobbles on this knife. You could nick pick that right there. It looks a little kind of off. If you see that. Kind of a little off. But beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, I would consider this a premium knife all day long. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah, definitely equivalent to that GEC. There's no difference except this is perfect and that isn't. And so, um, yeah. Another uh, premium knife. I would consider it a premium knife. I forget what I paid for this. Uh, I got it second hand. And I, had, I got a pretty good deal on it. I thought. I think around $80 is what I paid for that. So. <clears throat> you know. Why is it so hard. To call this a premium knife. Is it because of the fact that we spend so little money to get these um is it because it's made in china i mean i've got knives from 17 different countries i don't say a knife is, is not a premium knife just because of the country that i get the knife from and um you know some of these knives are, are i pay a lot of money for they're upscale knives but they don't equal the quality of this knife right here. And so why wouldn't we call this a premium knife? I don't know. Is it a bias? Is it a bias towards China? Is it our ego? Is it our pride? You know, if we go out and spend $500 on a knife, is it simply just pride to say, hey, a $20 knife is just as good as your $200? $400, $500 knife. Is that it? Is, you know, could that be it? Hey, I don't know. I'm just saying, right? I always have questions. And why do I struggle about it? This is unquestionably a good knife. Why is it so hard for me to call that a premium knife? And I'm telling you, I struggle with that. I don't know, guys. Um, let me know. What do you think about that? You know, <clears throat> um, I hear people talking all the time about Rough Riders. This is not a Rough Rider, but the truth is this knife probably came from the same factory as a Rough Rider. You can see it, it if you put an R on this and you took this shield away, um, this same pattern uh, 
Rough Rider. Um, matter of fact, I just got one. So I got one in tortoise shell uh, today. So um, yeah, it, it's pretty much the same knife, not the same uh, main blade, but everything else is pretty much the same. So um, I don't know. Is it because they're Rough Riders? You know, what? why don't we call a bird a bird? You know, why are we trying to say this is a chicken when it's an eagle? You know, I don't understand that. And I don't understand personally my my own reluctance. I have a hard time uh, calling that a premium knife. I don't understand my own reluctance. Uh, you know, I think it's, to me, a premium knife is an upper end uh, knife that the price reflects the fact that's a, a higher end knife where more quality is put into the knife. Um, they aren't all perfect. You know, custom knives often have little problems with them and can go for way more. Um, but the design, the attention to detail, you know, changes that the way we look at the knife. And, um, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe we just don't feel a lot goes into these knives. But I don't know, man. That's a pretty good knife. I love having it, too, by the way. I've got, um, you know, I just did a video on some Colt knives. Uh, they're a little different. They're not the 175th anniversary. And, not, you know, I'm not loading up on these Colt knives. I got this because it's a little different pattern and because of the uh, diamond jig bone. So let me know what you think, you know, uh, about those. Uh, tough questions. Tough. I, I understand that. Maybe uncomfortable. To ask yourself those questions but um you know i'm interested i'm interested in what you guys think and um thanks for watching the video i really appreciate your support